Tony D'Angelo here in Connecticut Morning, back with our final segment with Judy Heft and Leslie Gawoyer Montanil. And, um, you know, it always comes back. Uh, my friend and co-host on the sports show, Bob Lazari, says, when they tell you it's not about the money, it's about the money. We have to talk about the about the money part because, um, Wesley, Judy, you work in this business, you understand. Uh, we have a wonderful system, albeit horribly maligned uh, in this country, known as Social Security. Uh, and uh, it is a retirement backbone, if you will, supported by taxpayer dollars. Uh, but it's not a case, from what I understand, of anybody can just walk in when they're 65 and say, hey, give me a, give me a pension. There's something here you have to do, and why part-time employment might be a very good thing in this particular instance. Well, there's the old finger in the pot again. You have to have 10 consecutive years of paying into Social Security in order to get out. Mm -hmm. So if you turn 65 and you haven't worked, you know, let's say you went back to work when you were 55, or let's say you didn't work for a while, or you didn't work at all, you're not going to get your Social Security benefits. Maybe you were a high wage earner in your 30s, and then you stopped, and you didn't work, and you only went back, say, when you are 60. It's going to be a problem for you collecting Social Security. Now, how does that exactly work? Somebody works for, say, seven years and drops out and becomes a full-time mother, and then they go back and they work another three. Does that qualify for ten? It has to be ten consecutive years. Ten consecutive years. And if you don't do that... Because they base it on your highest uh, yearly income, too. So if you drop away from that, you're uh, you're you're away from the pot. That's I mean, you very can collect on your uh, husband's social security right. or your ex-husband even social security, but it's not really the same as collecting on your own. You have more financial independence when you're collecting your own. So you really should try to pay, you know, work part time so you can pay into it too. Because a lot of self-employed people don't pay into it necessarily, or they try not to. Well, yeah, uh, right, and uh, yeah, you you heard that here, folks. The um, and, and some didn't want to hear that, but uh, women, and typical thing, a uh, young lady will start uh, working part-time, going to school, 18, 19, 20. 26, 27, she's out of the game at nine years. Now, do those part-time years count as years relative to Social Security, or is this 10 years of substantial full-time employment? or there's a whole bunch of other rules in between and there's every... There's a lot of different rules, but I believe it could be 10 years of part-time employment. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be just, all full Just time. 10 years active. Yeah, 10 years, 10 years yeah. active. 10 years active, yeah. right. And, and, and that's really, I mean, for younger women, I mean, that could be the difference of, hey, do I, you know, stick around here another year just to take me over the wire? Because if I don't come back to work, I mean, you know, we, we might have just handed away, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars to people watching this, which is why I like to do this show. Uh, and uh, the other thing as far as um, relating to your family, you know, the one constant in this world is from what I have seen is change. We're changing all the time. Uh, you're working, uh, you're now working part time, your children are into other activities and I can only imagine the stress of the balance of things can be overwhelming, as it is for a lot of us trying to juggle things. What are some good ways of coping with that in, in your experience? You both lived it. Well, I think it's really important to realize what's important to you. Identify, really, what your priority is. Is your priority to be at home in the afternoon with your teenage children to monitor them on social media and Instagram or Snapchat or whatever it is they're on or making sure their homework's getting done. And when I mean teenage children, I mean the middle, more the middle school years, the 12, 13, 14 year olds, you know, they, they can't get themselves around to after school activities. If that's your priority, then when you are taking off of work when they're younger, then you have to look toward the future, which is what I, I always say. Don't look five months down the road, look five years down the road for your plan. It really does work. Try and see for yourself what your future you want it to be. And there are jobs and opportunities out there that you can evolve into to fulfill your goals, but you have to work at them. You, you really have to want it to be that. Um, and you'd be surprised, you know. Um, I have counseled many women while their children are in school from, you know, 8 in the morning to 4 in the afternoon. Get a job at a doctor's office, answer the phone, do the filing, or a pediatrician, or a dentist, or somewhere where 
they're very happy to take you on. They don't have to pay your insurance or whatever. And before you know it, four or five years may pass and you'll be managing the office. You know, so you have to kind of see what do you want your life to look like? Or do you want to go back to a city, the city, and work and be, you know, working 60, 70 hours a week? And there are some people who really enjoy that and there's right. nothing wrong with that. But you have to really have a vision for yourself and you have to really figure it out by whatever skills you had and figuring out what new skills you can acquire. And Judy and I talk about it's really important to, you know, keep an education going, whether it's learning social media, learning computer, whatever's new and out there to keep yourself within the potential of the workforce so you can contribute to your future, whether it's social security, you know, for social security or other reasons. Well, you know, in, in my grade school educated father, who is incredibly wise as I get older and older, and I'm certainly doing that, would always say, you got to get your own suit of clothes. You, you have to get what fits you. Don't get what fits someone else because you're, you're never going to be happy with it. So that if it's that balance of part-time work, but yet I am inclined to be a mother and to invest in my children, that's great if it's getting back on that high train to 60, 70 hours and, you know, more or less kind of trying to balance the two, that's great. Uh, you know, there's, there's no universal solvent, but we have to do what is best for, for all of us. My last question to you, um, as far as um, getting back to the self-esteem thing just for a moment, um, what can, I mean, what can the working spouse do for the non-working spouse to kind of keep them on a on a plane and to keep them working, uh, you know, working towards the same goal? And, and I know we're running short of time, sadly. Uh, I would just say that the working spouse really has to maintain the utmost respect for the spouse that has given up the career to stay home. It doesn't become now all of a sudden, well, I'm the wage earner and I'm better than you. I think respect in the relationship is how you make the person who's given up something they worked for feel better about why they're doing what they're doing at the time and recognizing it's really transitional and it's going to move to something else at some point in the future. That's a very good thought. There always is a future. I mean, the, uh, the vision of Ralph Cramden being king of the castle is <laughs> kind of no more. <laughs> you are nothing, a peasant. But uh, I can't believe it. We're out of time. You guys have to come back and do this again, as I know you will. And I'm consistently blessed by your wonderful participation. Leslie the Lawyer Montanil, financial concierge Judy Heft, and uh, one uh, made-to-look-very good talk show host, Tony D'Angelo, back here in a moment with David A. Andelman talking about the affairs of the Treaty of Versailles, the world situation, and don't go away. So happy to have you. Thank you, ladies. Thanks, Appreciate Tony. it. Thanks, Tony. Thanks, Thanks for, for having us.